out to get me <laughs> spring is out to get you <laughs> love it uh, anyway so this is actually our final episode of this season i've had so much fun i so did too and so did i hope you guys did too <laughs> yeah, yeah and you did too and you did too <laughs> even if you didn't i know you did just a little bit <laughs> yeah um so we thought that a good way to close out this season would be to do kind of like a, a spring refresh yeah spring revival and share our like hot tips on how to elevate your life and these are things that we've talked about before yes on the podcast mm-hmm. and just here to reiterate them yep and have it all in one place because these are things that both of us have really felt passionately about and Absolutely. have like definitely like elevated our our lives i agree <laughs> um and there's no better time than the spring i mean that's when just everything is blooming including ourselves and so it's just the perfect time just to em- embark on this new journey of tips that we have for you yeah and it's there's never a wrong time to reinvent yourself to never. make goals and like i know we're now a little bit out from like new year's goals and stuff and around that time i saw on tiktok a lot of people talking about like we're in winter and kind of reiterating what you were saying like we're Mm -hmm. in winter we're in like the downtime like this isn't actually a good time to set goals so if you didn't feel inspired at the new year Mm -hmm. you probably do now because Mm -hmm. those people were saying like the way that nature works yes is the winter time is for the downtime and we always put this new year right in the smack dab of the winter solstice Mm -hmm. And we're expected to just have all this change and all these new goals and things like that. But we're supposed to be chilling. We're supposed to be hibernating. We're supposed to be living a more relaxed, slow life. And so it puts a lot of pressure of us on us in the new year. When no, no, no. The new year starts in the spring when everything starts to bloom and the days start to get later and the sun is shining more. And that is when we should really be taking these goals seriously. Yes. So we are going to go over all of our hot tips. We have 10 here that will just kind of get you into the mood and spirit to just elevate your life, create not necessarily goals, but just to feel better and romanticize your life. Agreed. So first on the list, I have daily movement and outdoor walks. I feel like I talk about my outdoor walks at least once a day. And I love that, as you should, because I feel like the more you're consistent with repeating it, it'll eventually become a habit. Obviously, it's already been a habit for you, but then it gets other people like, you know what? She's been walking every single day for the last three months. I need to get my ass out there, too. Yeah. So... I like that you talk about it all the time because it just reiterates it. that we need to be moving our body. Yeah. And I used to do only like a 20 minute walk, 15 minute walk. Then I graduated to 30 minutes. And then when I started 75 hard in January, mm-hmm. I upped it to 45 minutes, which then it would end up going into an hour just naturally, depending yeah. on the route I would take. Mm-hmm. And it, it by increasing it that much and also that gradually, then my 30 minute walk which used to be my long walk is now like the shortcut Mm -hmm. and it feels so breezy and so it's just like my time to connect with nature and connect with my dog I love it like I just love watching her like she's so happy Mm -hmm. so I encourage everyone to get outside and get get the sunshine yes and don't let weather hold you back Mm -hmm. because there's something about being in like bad weather too that's nice maybe that's like the midwest in us because even like during a tornado we're like I'm like walk. standing outside. No, <laughs> absolutely. Like, I'm going to go to the store really quick. Can you just hold off on the tornado yeah. for five minutes? The only time that I won't is if it's dangerous for her. For like, sure. If it's like 10 degrees. Yeah. I'm probably, I'll, I'll do like a 10 minute with her. Yeah. She can handle 10 minutes in that. But yeah. um, if it's 30 and over, I'll be out there for at least 45 minutes. And, and she loves it. Oh my God. Yeah. She's just like running and frolicking the whole time. Good. And and if I try to take a shortcut, she's like, no, bitch, we're going this way. <laughs> You're not cutting my walk short. No, yeah, 100%. So for the next thing we have here is getting ready every day. And I don't want that to intimidate intimidate you. you. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. 
intimidate you because it could be however that it looks like for you, at least showering every single day. There's been times where I was like, I'm going to skip the shower today, but taking a shower, washing your hair, putting even a little bit of makeup on, something that, that makes you feel good. I started this months ago and I told Brie, I got this weird rut with my makeup, especially being a makeup artist and I love makeup and I have a bunch of it and I'm not using it. I just got in this habit of not getting ready because it was easier not to, but I wanted to break that habit. And so every day after the shower, I would just sit in my room, throw a little concealer out under the eyes, maybe around the nose with a little redness. I wasn't doing a full face every day, putting a little mascara on and some lip balm. Mm -hmm. And just doing that every single day created a habit of doing that every day. And then I felt great doing it which then would spark and spiral into me doing a little bit more for myself. Now I'm doing my hair a little bit more. Maybe I'm getting a little bit more glammed. I'm putting more different outfits together. And it really just spirals more into a positive um, just experience instead of being like, oh, I have to get ready. I don't want to get ready. But once you do get ready in the morning, it just sets the day. It really does. It's like making your bed. Yeah. And I feel like too, I'm like the only person who still doesn't make their bed, though, and it doesn't count for me. OK, <laughs> for everyone except for you. I know. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> but make your bed if it <laughs> makes you feel better. You make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also feel like when I get ready in the morning, I feel more prepared for mm. if I need to leave the house for an unexpected reason. Yeah. Now, I have no problem leaving looking like a naked mole rat yeah. and Adam Sandler had a baby. I'll do that absolutely every day. But being put together makes me feel just different, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more confident. Um, Sometimes I've had like random spur of the moments with you or other friends and family. They're like, hey, I'm going to go run out this way. Do you want to get do you want to come with me or do whatever? Mm -hmm. And instead of scrambling me like, oh, let me just give me like 30 minutes to get ready. I'm already ready. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. That feels Spont good. That's spontaneous. How do you say that? Spontane Spontaneity. Spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else? I saw this too on the Tickety Talk where they were talking about like outfits and um, like wearing your special things. Yeah. Like your special perfumes and mm -hmm. things. Wear them now. Wear them yeah. for you. You have them for you. Um. I didn't know that people like saved their fragrances for special things. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I wear mine. I know they do that for like China. For oh oh for like, like your, your special your serving dishes and mm -hmm. things. Yes, yes, yes. And they're like, why are you saving that? Just use it every day. Okay, here's an example. Like a wine glass. I don't really drink. Mm -hmm. And I told Ruben the other day, I was like, I'm gonna start putting my water in a wine glass because why not? I, th the main reason why I enjoy drinking wine is literally the way that it makes me feel in the wine glass. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start putting water in there. I like it. Like why not? And it feels like you're at a fancy restaurant because that's where they put your water in anyway. That it you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, next one is to drink your water. How Yay! about that? And drink it in a wine glass. Exactly. This, everybody says it and we get it's it. It's annoying. It's annoying. But on, honestly, drink your water. I actually ended up going through um, a little health problem because I wasn't drinking enough water. Oh, I didn't know that. the doctor. Yeah. Part of my, the digestive issue that I had because I had stopped my water intake. I was always drinking water, but my body was used to so much more. Oh yeah, you did tell me this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And so I ended up, Brie actually has like this really nice glass water bottle that has the ounces. And we've seen uh, so many brands have these, but I really liked hers because it was in glass. It was clear. And it was big enough where I felt like I didn't have to continuously fill it up because it's 32 ounces. So if I even just drink two of those, I know I'm halfway there. Women should be getting at least 60 to 90 ounces of water. And then if you want to push it and get your gallon in, definitely do that. So I bought that and I'm just cruising through that and you just, you feel better. Yeah, it's annoying that you have to pee all the time. But your body acclimates. It does. And like you're, you look better. Your skin's better. Your system runs better. Yeah. It's just really important to be drinking water. Yeah. And to find a water bottle that you like, like, like how you just said, mm -hmm. you liked that water bottle, so you got it because you knew that was going to motivate you to drink it more. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are Stanley haters, <laughs> but if you love your Stanley and it gets you to drink your water and you enjoy the process of drinking water from it, that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. And whatever that's, whatever 
whatever that it is that's going to get you to drink your water. Jake just drinks, um, brings around a gallon of water and he knows that he's got to drink that whole thing. <laughs> Ruben does too. It, it's a guy thing. Yeah. So it, whatever that it is that's going to hold you accountable to do it, drink that water. Did you ever see that um, it's the dude that holds the signs? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it says, "Did you drink your water today, you stupid bitch?" <laughs> and Ruben and I will just randomly send that to each other. I love that, as you should. <laughs> That's just the title. Did you drink <laughs> your water, you stupid, stupid bitch? bitch. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay, so next we have staying social with friends, but I also have the edit of don't skip out because I feel like in, especially in our thirties, a lot of us tend to glorify people canceling plans and like i get it it's all funny like oh i'm so glad somebody canceled and i could just sit on the couch and watch tv or whatever because you're more comfortable but it is so important just to be around people that you love and that uplift you and that are positive because it recharges your batteries more than you'll ever know that is like my number one tip for mental health is surrounding yourself with people who make you feel good And don't skip out on that. If you find that every time you go out with people and that's not the case, you feel drained. Yeah. It's time to examine who you are around and who you surround yourself with. Because I used to feel that way. I used to like consider myself a major introvert. Mm -hmm. I don't think I am, by the way. No, I don't. Um, You're extroverted with the people that you love. Yeah. And... Um, I, have you heard of ambivert? I think it's called. I don't know. I don't think it so. It means that you can kind of like pick and choose when you're it. And technically, ninety oh. percent of people are am, ambiverts. Then I feel like I'm that person too. That yeah, because I have a very extroverted personality, but I enjoy my alone time, and I think it just comes down to whatever brings me peace. Yeah. So if like yeah. there's people around me that aren't bringing me peace, I'm not going to be around them. Yeah. But then when we have like our girls' nights. That shit's so much fun. And like, I don't want to miss out on that. Yes, exactly. And I, to to kind of like touch on the whole like glorifying the canceling thing. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't either. Because like you should only cancel if it's necessary. For sure. I mean, and if it's not necessary, it should be like every now and then. And like. If you don't feel good, if time slipped away, if you're feeling overwhelmed. Shit happens. Obviously things happen. But just because you don't want to, like, actually really think about it. Sit in it and be like, is it because I just don't want to put clothes on and go over there? Mm-hmm. What What's the actual reason? And if it's not something serious, just go over there. Because 10 out of 10, you're going to be like, I'm so glad we didn't cancel this. Yeah. I needed this. You're going to leave just so fulfilled. Yes. And if you find yourself canceling a lot, mm-hmm. that's mean. I'm just going to say that's You're not mean. nice. No, it's not. Because on the other spectrum, people are looking forward to your company, too. And if you're canceling on them all the time, I would think, like, maybe this person doesn't want to be around me. Yeah. And so, no, you're not responsible for how other people feel. But just so you know, that's how it looks like on the other end. I've I've had friends that canceled on me every single time that I wanted to plan something. If she planned something, I was always there whenever. And then as soon as I would plan something, cancel, 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 cancel. And by the end, like our friendship, obviously, like there's no longer a friendship, but that's because it's if you're canceling on me all the time, like to me, it just shows that you don't. You don't want to be there. No. And like, I'm not going to put the time and effort and energy into that either. Yeah. So canceling just doesn't look good on that end either. And again, just to reiterate, if you're canceling because you don't want to go, maybe right. you should find people that you do want to be around. Absolutely. Um, the next thing on the list is eating healthy foods, which kind of goes hand in hand with the water. Mm-hmm. Um, so this will probably be pretty quick. But just when you eat healthy foods, makes you feel good, mm-hmm. makes your skin look alive and hydrated and Mm -hmm. i feel like it also just sets you up for success in all areas of your life you just feel better overall absolutely anytime that i have junk food sometimes i don't feel this way if it's just like a one-time thing but if i have like a period of time where i'm choosing foods that my body doesn't agree with i just feel sluggish Mm -hmm. and like foggy and so eating healthy foods consistently i'm not saying like all day every day all the time but overall it it elevates your life and if there was one thing that getting braces really showed me is the importance of eating healthy um so because of having braces it really invisalign mind you 
you can't eat and drink certain things. And so I found myself just cooking a lot at home and I, I got a lot of the snacking out because you can't snack as much anymore. And so even just the snacking of the processed food, junk foods that I was eating, cutting that out of my diet, I immediately noticed change in my overall health, the weight, how I look, hair, like skin, everything, my gut, I feel 10 times better. And I know that not everybody has access to make a home cooked meal every single day. Actually years ago when I was full-time school in work and I was gone from my house 12 hours a day, I would meal prep simple meals, but they were still homemade meals. And I really can't just stress enough cutting out processed bullshit and just opting for healthier options. It doesn't mean that you have to completely you know, take them off the table. I still love my sweets. I still love my chips. I still love my dips. I love all of those things, but just me being more conscious that 80% of your diet is more good fueling foods and then save that 20% for whatever that you want to indulge in. And then that stuff tastes even better when you have it. Yeah. And And sometimes sometimes it tastes like shit. Yes. Yeah. So again, with the braces thing, when I had to just, I cut out my snacking and I'm just making homemade you know, homemade, homemade meals, <laughs> homemade meals. Um, there are times where I'm like, you know what, tonight I don't feel like cooking. I'm going to run, maybe grab Portillo's or grab Chick-fil-A or something, you know, fast. <laughs> um, I always end up feeling like shit afterwards because yeah. I have taken the time to fuel my body. Yeah. And then that stops me from like, there's just so many times now that me and Jake will want to go out to eat. And I'm like, where? Because like I, it sucks yeah. and I'm not going to feel good afterwards. So yeah. let's just go to the grocery store, make something that we would have gotten out anyway. Yeah, it's going to take time. I'm hungry and I don't want to spend two hours cooking, but I'm just going to feel so much better afterwards anyway. Yeah. And let's normalize honoring your body and going off of what it really wants for mm-hmm. the most part. Like you said, where are we going out to eat? I don't want to go there because it's going to make me feel like shit. Yeah. I oftentimes in the past have been like okay fine let's go there I know I'm gonna feel like shit Mm -hmm. and then I just feel like shit for it takes me a couple days to recuperate Mm -hmm. so making better decisions in like we can still go out to eat but I don't want to go there because they don't have options for me that I like exactly because all this to say like I still like going out to eat but I'm just gonna opt for something like pizza doesn't really bother me so we'll get Lumanati's deep dish and I just like tear it up throw it on there that's a wonderful fast night out for me that I know I'm not going to feel like shit, but Mm -hmm. everybody feels differently. You know what I mean? Foods affect everybody differently. Yeah. So that makes sense why you like lose because it's more saucy mm -hmm. and more tomatoey. It's Mm -hmm. less cheesy. That makes sense for you. So tomatoey. Yeah. They got their like chunky tomato sauce. And it's hilarious because we are so opposite (laughs) and lose gives me acid reflux from the tomatoes. That makes sense. There are times sometimes I'll get that um, just because of acid in general, like any acidic food. But yeah, (laughs) that's funny. I know. (laughs) So this one, (laughs) (laughs) I love how you you don't have to write, say it how I wrote it, but you can. No, I'm gonna. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So for the next one, we have a book club for you guys, not us. (laughs) No, hear us out. Um, Me and Brie, when did we start reading? When did we start reading books? 2022. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. So I, maybe we've said this on a podcast before, like in the earlier years, but when me and her started reading books, like I was never a fan of reading. And I think it was just because it was so pushed down my throat through high school and just like school in general that once I got out, I was like, I'm never going to read again. And then just the, you know, the age of social media and people started making reading books look fun and I'm like okay well if I get to choose a genre that I know that I would be interested in like I want to read a book so then me and her just got on this book kicking read and like I had a blast like I loved all the books that we've read thus far and um I want to keep it up now I what I need to do is make more time to read more books because I was like on this uphill just I was trucking and then I just me went downhill um But all that to say, if you find a group of people that enjoy doing something that gets you out of just like the getting off of your phone or just doing something, not watching TV, read a book because it is so much fun. And if you can get a group of people that you can do a book club with, 
my mother-in-law, she, her book clubs are a hoot. Um, and I just, I love that for her. And it's like going back to the social aspect things of doing something with your friends. I think that's a way to just like get that community. Okay, not to put more on our plate, but that would be really fun. Right? Like, because we already do our girls' nights. Yeah. And then just be like, hey, guys, read this book. And, like, if nobody reads it, that's fine. Yeah. But, like, we're already, like, playing games and hanging out. Yeah. It'd be fun to just do, like, a little discussion group. I know. And it's just, it's it's crazy. I don't know. Like, reading a book to me is just so much different than watching a movie. No, because you use your imagination. There's mm-hmm. way more descriptive words. You 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 learn way more about the inner thoughts of a person than you're going to get on a movie. Sure. I used to hate when people be like, yeah, the movie's fine, but the book, the book was, was way better. better. I'm like, okay, nerd. Right. Oh, no, I totally get it no, now. And now I'm like over anything. Although mm-hmm. it also, I would say watching a movie or a show that's based on a book that I've read has been way more fun actually than just watching the movie because Mm -hmm. it's like you can see what they changed and you're looking out for those things and also especially if you're about to read a book where the movie's already like you know it's coming and they've casted it yeah it helps me to like see who they've casted visualize because I can visualize them in my head and also I do this, but I don't think you do this. But when I start reading a book, I'm like, I need a face to the name Mm -hmm. and this character. Mm -hmm. So then I go online and I find an (laughs) actor that I think perfectly resembles this character. And so then I think of that actor. So, um, you're but really, it's just a lot of really fun. good at that. Thanks. Well, a lot of it, though, is there's websites that have it already provided that oh. other people do. But then sometimes I'm like, I disagree, and then I'll find somebody else. So some I can take credit for some of it, but okay. not all of it. But, but you are good at, at that. Thank you. Because I've no, I just never looked up. I just create some person in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always, it's weird. It's people I've never seen before. How do I mm-hmm. do that? I don't know. Did you know, okay, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that that's actually impossible, that it is somebody that you have technically seen before. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if that's true. That is just what I've heard. But like in my mind, I don't think of an actor or an actress for the roles. I just like create a character in my mind. Yeah. I think that's probably more normal. Okay. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Whatever. Um, And then one more thing when you're talking about like kids, uh, Mm -hmm. like being in school and it being like Mm -hmm. homework. Did you ever see that meme where it's like, this is where my lying started and it showed a reading log? <laughs> I lied. So I actually was able to forge my mom's signature and I got in trouble for it. Not through oh. the school, but my mom was like, I didn't sign these. Damn it. How'd she find it? Gina. I don't know. Maybe she went through my shit, <laughs> but it was like third grade. So she probably was going through my homework just to make sure I was True. actually like getting it done. And yeah. then she was like, I've never signed for these. Like you can tell it's like, and then in high different. school, did you ever look up smart, um, spark notes? Oh yeah. I get so much trouble because they change things. Mm-hmm. But that's how I would get through a book in high school. Cause I'm like, I don't want to read the book that you've given me. So you know what? And now there's audio books. Like, I, I mean, maybe they were back then. I think they were called books on tape. Well now, like, Oh my god, books on tape? I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. That's really showing. But like if you gave me a book in high if I was in high school right now, I would just download the audiobook. Yeah. I have no problem listening to something. You can listen to it on like one and a half speed. Get that shit done. That's what I do too. I listen even on YouTube, we're like going on a tangent now. I will watch my videos on two speed. So it's like, and Jake cracks up every, like he will just bust out laughing. He's like, that just sounds so funny. And I'm like, but I can understand every single thing that they're saying. Yeah. You know what it is? It's because of TikTok. It's it ruined us. It has. Because even on TikTok, I'm like, you're dragging on two, two times. Yep. I need it. It's uh, to the point. Yes. Okay. So this one's a little bit deeper explore your spirituality whatever that looks like for you so you can go to church meditate be in nature like whatever that is for you i think just really connecting spiritually is just way more intimate it means more and it kind of just it gives you purpose in life i think so too and i was explaining to amanda yesterday i feel like i just have always felt god more when I'm in nature like Mm -hmm. when my feet bare feet are like I'm not even like a hippity dippity like grounding whatever but like I believe I know (laughs) like being in the sand and like seeing trees like it really does make me feel spiritual Mm -hmm. so for me is being in water too like a big body of water yeah like I love just being like having that rush through you and just like the energy and 
it's just it's magic and it really it's especially when you're in nature it's just so it's so hard not to feel something like for you sure. just feel everything and and taking time for every beautiful sunset that you see because mm-hmm. that is part of it too i think absolutely um but yeah like if church is your thing meditation is your thing i would love to explore meditation mm-hmm. It takes a lot of self-discipline. It does. So that's, you know, that would be good for me. I find the way I can meditate is, again, through a walk. It's the only time that I can completely shut my mind off and be one with the present moment. Because that's what meditation, you need to be present in the moment, but just to sit down and I can't do it. My mind just does not shut up. But when I am walking around and I'm seeing the trees and the grass and I'm smelling the fresh air, everything in my universe at that time, I'm just one with. Mm -hmm. And it feels so freeing. Yeah. Which is what meditation should feel. You should feel free. And that's what it makes me feel. So, yeah. That's what I do. Walking does that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that we talk about constantly because it's important is learn something new. You got to do it. So for us, we've talked about we've kickboxed. Um, she wants to learn a new language. I'm, you know, in piano. Constantly try to learn something new. I feel like that really also helps you kind of pull you out of that day to day. Just constant. The monotony of life. <laughs> absolutely. And it really you never know what you're capable until you do something and because of that i have found new joys and love for different parts of life because i'm experiencing it for the first time which is awesome and i feel like when you're always comfortable and and just content it's it's good to be uncomfortable and get out of that and to try new things learn new things because that's how you're going to grow as a person too. Yeah. You don't want to be stagnant and be the same person you were when you were 21. Right. You know, your whole life when you're in kindergarten, middle school, high school, not only are you constantly learning new things in school, but you're learning new things in life. Like mm-hmm. everything's new. And then when you become an adult, this is you like, learned everything. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not true, but yeah. for the most part. What you think. Yeah, you exactly. You just learned what you've been taught, and now you're like, okay, now what do I do with life? Yeah. You got to keep exploring, mm-hmm. making it fun. And if you don't want to, I, I mean, you're more than welcome to stay where you're at, but life is so much more fun when you're learning something. Yeah, and I forgot who said this, but I think it was on a podcast. He said something about like, you know, people don't want to try new things or learn new things because they're scared. Mm-hmm. It is scary, but you know what's even scarier and we've all done this is when you're a baby and you take a step for the first time Mm -hmm. you've never done that before and you did it anyway and Mm -hmm. guess what you fell on your face and it hurt but you did it again you're old now bitch like you could do it if you can take your first steps Mm -hmm. you can do this and if it wasn't steps it was crawling you know whatever we all did new things when we were little and so it's important to keep doing new things now i agree and when i started piano for the first time i wasn't scared to try it i'm not somebody who's i don't really let fear stop me from trying things but trying something new in general is uncomfortable because it's an unknown you're like i don't know what this is or what to do and so i want to say the first month that I was in piano every single time I sat in the chair I would feel confident and excited to start and then she would tell me to do something that I did not know how to do because I don't know I'm just learning I my palms would get so sweaty I would be so Mom's spaghetti yeah essence Arms spaghetti <laughs> spaghetti essence spaghetti essence <laughs> um but I would be like I'm having a panic attack because I'm like so uncomfortable and I was like I hear what you're saying and it seems so easy I can't do it yeah and um and then you know then I would spend the week doing it and then I'd come back and I'm like oh and like she's like see and I was like I don't know why I was freaking out and then she told me to do something new and I'm like oh I'm freaking out again and now that it's been months and months and months since I've been piano like 
every time she tells me to do something new, even if it's something I don't know, I'm like, oh, I got this eventually. Like, yeah. That's not, even, I, not even a second thought. I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't know how to do that right now, but I'll be good. And see, so you've boosted your confidence yeah. by trying it and mm-hmm. failing. Yeah. By fucking up. Yeah. Um, that's something too. Like, don't be afraid to ask questions. I just did my first hip hop step aerobics class and there was a... Uh, this teacher she would say different names for the same moves that i knew Mm -hmm. so there was this one move that she did and it was a little bit different and everybody else caught on and we did it for two songs and i was like fuck like i still cannot get this (laughs) and she's like all right are you guys doing good any questions and like i'm just like yeah i have a question can you please break this down and I can I know that past me would have never done that no. like years ago I would have been like I'll just sit here and like do something else while they're doing that but ask questions and now I can do that move like a I pro and it's fun nice because you wouldn't have no and I love that you did that yeah in a group of people oh. in a class wow and you were like please show me that one more time yeah and I and I didn't know the name of it too I was like the the straddle thingy and then I attempted to show her and <laughs> I did it wrong oh obviously my, oh my god but I gave no fucks I was like I don't know how to do this I, I would rather know how <laughs> I love that good I'm so proud of you <laughs> I'm growing up you are <laughs> side note um my cousin actually sent me she saw something on the people pleasing uh-huh. and she was like oh my god i did the same thing and sent me a, a funny like uh tiktok about people pleasing oh, i love that and i was watching it and i was like oh, i don't relate to any of these anymore that any is of awesome them. so you have come a long way i have i'm proud of you thank you okay the next one is exploring your personal style so you can feel confident and excited when leaving the house. This goes along with like getting ready every day because even if you're switching out of your pajamas and into a colorful sweatpants set, exhibit A, just switching out, especially if you work from home, I guess that was mainly for people that like work from home or even on like a weekend, it just makes you feel a little bit more put together like you've done something for yourself. Mm-hmm. You've, it, it's more about just like how you're care- caring for yourself. Absolutely. And you're telling yourself that you're worthy to feel good and mm-hmm. to feel confident. So um, it all goes back down to the confidence. Yeah. Like that's what we want is for you to feel confident. And if you feel like a confident bad bitch in a sweatsuit, sweatsuit, in a sweat suit outfit that's what we want we want you to find that style whatever that you can rock that makes you feel you yeah and then the uh part about discovering your personal style Mm -hmm. i'm excited to like dive more into this and just find out what that is i see a lot of like capsule wardrobes and like i'm trying especially the color theory that you've been talking about too yes I've been really diving down like the color analysis, mm-hmm. um, which is so funny because my outfit yesterday, you were like, oh my God, that like looks extra good on you. She looked amazing. And it's because I followed my season. She found her season and she was wearing an outfit for her season. And I was like, uh, yeah, like you look fantastic. I mean, you look yeah. fantastic now too, but like only today, but mm, <laughs> not today. N- never. So never. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you look like it really brought out like your features. And it's Thanks. so weird that like, just you picking something like that Mm -hmm. i just never really thought about that because i'm like if i like it i'm gonna wear it yeah well and like i also think that too yeah 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 yeah. i think too like i'm trying i'm fucking trying i'm fucking trying (laughs) it's only two fucking days (laughs) it's only two fucking days (laughs) i'm trying to not like follow trends so much while i say that i feel like me even saying that is fucking trendy yeah but it's hard too because I do like a lot of trendy things. For sure. But just trying to figure out what what do I like? What flatters my body? What is my style? And I think learning the color analysis thing kind of just gives me a guidebook. You know, I like I like rules and I like control and I like whatever. And if I can mm-hmm. find something that's like, well, this is kind of sure proof that this will look good on you. It's helpful and yeah. assisting. So. Um, I haven't explored the Kivy body types thing yet, but I think that will be the extra cherry on the Sunday. But, yeah. you know, not even to say that you have to go down the color analysis route or the Kibby body types route. It doesn't actually matter. It's yeah. finding what you actually like and what makes you feel good. And if that is a baggy sweatshirt and your millennial leggings, go for it. That's what we love. Go for it. I feel confident in this. I feel springy. Yes. I feel comfortable. And I'm confident. When you're comfortable, you're confident. And when you're confident, you can rule the world. And so just 
indulge in that style, whatever it is. Yeah. With no reservations on it. You know, again, doesn't have to be trendy. If you, I was just going to go into different styles, but you get it. And last but not least, which I'm, I'm saying this to you because I know all of us can, can use this. It's clean out your space. I couldn't remember what the last one was on the list. So I was on the edge of my seat. Like, what is it? <laughs> we all have that junk drawer, that drunk that drunk, that junk closet, that junk room. I'm just going to say that junk room. <laughs> that we need to just declutter and um, start fresh with a new space. I know some people aren't like this. And this is where like me and Jake will always have a conversation about this. I'm somebody, if I have a cluttered space, I have a cluttered mind. Same. It. I just cannot function until things are organized or put away. And that doesn't mean like, There are times, like, my house isn't spot, you know, spotless. There's, there's things that are out of place. I'm not, like, crazy to the point where, but even if you are, like, if things are cluttered, the rest of my life is cluttered. Jake can live in, I don't, what's, like, the a pigsty? That's what I was looking for. And he would be, like, yeah, no, this is great. Yeah, like, comfortable. And he's like, doesn't bother me what I'm doing. I don't get how. So if you're out there and that's how you live your life, I, I'm i happy for you. But I, I implore wish. you to clean your but space. Still, I want you to clean good. the space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that being messy in general can be very representative of your life. Mm-hmm. I learned this when I was younger because my grandpa owned his own company and in the job interview he would walk outside and have them show him their car and if they had a messy car he wouldn't hire them oh my gosh and when i learned that it was kind of a reality check for not a reality check that's dramatic but (laughs) it stuck with me yeah and because i used to be so messy when i lived at home with my parents and i find my it's it's funny because I love to be so clean and organized and tidy, but mm-hmm. I can be messy. Yeah. But I can't take it for long. And when I see it that way, I'm like, Ugh, like, I, I need to fix this. For sure. Um, But yeah, that has always stuck with me, especially in times where I'm like going inside from my car and I have like a drink or two and like a bag and I'm like, oh, I can get that later. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, just just get it now. Just grab it now and throw it out now. It takes two seconds. Mm-hmm. I love the tip, I forgot what book I learned this in, but it's if something takes five minutes or less, just do it. Mm-hmm. So that's a good way to keep your space tidy and clean instead of like having to do an overhaul clean. Mm-hmm. But that has been something that's helped me the past year, honestly, just to keep my space tidy so that I don't have to overhaul it all the time. But um, it is always nice to have that one year. Cl- like for me, it's every spring. Every spring, I'm just like spring cleaning getting because even if I am I'm like I'm pretty clean now back then also when I was in my younger 20s I was messy but that also had some underlining issues like a little bit of depression a little bit of anxiety and just having like a chaotic lifestyle yeah it obviously showed in my living space yeah so that checks out (laughs) it checks out um but now like throughout the year like you end up keeping things or things pile up and then by the end of the year you're like i cannot believe how much garbage or things that i've held on to that i don't need and another thing that i like about doing these big cleans is donating yeah yeah and so i love doing like a full closet clean out um, a garage clean out and see things that i can just like give away that are no longer serving me and just building up space and making my space more cluttered when I, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, definitely. And you can make space for the things that you are welcoming into your life. Yeah. You can't welcome those things into your life if there's no space for them right now. Right. So clean your space. Because I know you're listening to this and you're like, damn, I do have my car. My car is a mess. My room's a mess. My laundry's a mess. I get it. We're all a mess. It's my office. My office. Some girl <laughs> messaged me and she was like, I've been subscribed to you since 2020 and I'm st- I'm so excited to see your office. And I'm like, oh my God, that has been dirty since fucking 2020. And she just keeps the door shut because it's out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Ruben will open the door because he's like, we need airflow. And I'm like, 
do, 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 do. I close it. That's on my list for this month, actually. I to love that take for care you. Of it. Spring re- revival. And even new office. Even my like makeup organization in there, because that's where I keep like makeup that companies will send me that mm-hmm. I'm not going to keep. I There's no reason why I need six bins. Yeah. Let's have one. Mm-hmm. And when that gets full, donate it. Yes. I don't need six full and then donate it. Right. I'm love inspired. I'm inspired to clean this weekend. I'm excited. Yay. Oh, that was it. Oh my it. god, I can't believe that's it. That's the end of the season. Oh my gosh. Oh. Please let us know how you guys enjoy the season. Um we're not gonna be gone for long. Yeah, no, it's not long. It's not gonna be as long as the last break. But this is gonna allow us to catch up and also get feedback from you guys on just maybe episodes that you want to hear and just like an overhaul of what you've already he- heard thus far. And if you wanna want us to dive down maybe deeper in some of the episodes we've already talked about. Yeah, give us, just, give us just some info on what you're thinking, what you like. We want this to be very like community based yeah. and like just we value your opinion. Me Obviously, too. this is about you. Exactly. So. Um, and should we ask the, about the book club? If you want to. Okay. So but just don't hold us to it. Okay. Yeah. Don't at <laughs> all hold us to this. It's just an idea. It's an idea. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah. I've always wanted to join a book club. And I know we joked about the book club earlier about like, you should do it. We're not going to. <laughs> um, but we were kind of contemplating about kind of sort of doing one for th- for this group of us. Like, yeah. I don't know how it would work. I don't think that once a month is feasible for us personally. Mm-hmm. But maybe each season we can be like, hey, let's read. This is the book for the season. And then at the end we can review it and talk about it or something. Yeah. Like that could be more feasible. I don't know. Let us know your thoughts. Um, because anytime I've even asked for like podcast episode requests, like what do you guys want to hear? I have heard people say book reviews. Okay. Um, so just let us know. Let us know. We're putting it out there, but we're also not we might never speak of this again. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Just can't hold us to it. Yeah. <laughs> we're just happy to be here. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much for listening, especially to all of our episodes. We've had so much fun and I'm so glad that we're doing this together Me now. Too. This is way more fun. I feel like this has been one of the most like fulfilling things in my career thus far. Oh my <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, that was really heavy. <laughs> I just got shot. <laughs> There's my essence. <laughs> I was shot with your essence. <sighs> that make I. That was so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> you said that I like res- you were accepting an award. <laughs> How do I respond that to that? That was so beautiful. <laughs> You don't have to say anything. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I've just had so much fun doing it. Me it's too. been. Um, a lot of fun. I've loved the um, episodes that we've done and I'm excited for the next season too. Yeah. I was actually looking at my phone and I have like the whole second season like filled out. Obviously what? you have to go over it too. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, oh my God, like we have like an endless amount of ideas. So I'm extra excited to see what you guys are interested in too because yeah. we love involving you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. So thank you so much for everything. Please rate the podcast on Apple. You can leave a review on there too. For whatever reason, you can't leave a review on Spotify. You can only oh, rate it. Okay. But please do. It would really help our show. Absolutely. And if you haven't watched any of these episodes, they are on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then do you want to say your socials? Mine or yours? No, or you or mean of the podcast, but you can do. I am <laughs> slow. Anyway. <laughs> You can follow us on Instagram at In Her Skin Podcast and also on TikTok at In Her Skin. And then, obviously, you already know us, Amanda Devon and Brianna Fox. Pew, 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 pew. pew, 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 pew. See you soon. I don't like saying goodbye. I don't want to say goodbye. Okay. Let's just keep talking. <laughs> okay. So now we come to the end of the road is this country still i can't <laughs> let go i don't know this. A, it's r&b isn't it like um i said is this country <laughs> wait i mean i i i don't know how to sing closing time <laughs> <laughs> Why am I boys to men? I'm like, oh, why okay. am I fucking blanking out on them? It's a good song, but it's about a, a breakup. So we're not breaking uh, up. We're not. <laughs> we're not. We're done. We're not. We're done. You're done. You're done. You're done.